We are coming up on a nine o'clock and we begin this hour with breaking news. The Department of Education has launched an investigation into Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools handling of a sexual assault allegation involving a five year old. Yeah, Queen City News first broke this story back in February. The mother told us the sexual assault happened on a school bus connected to Croft Community School in North Charlotte. The mom says the school system failed to properly investigate the allegations. In February, the mother even told our Robin Kennedy the little girl was still forced to ride the school bus with the alleged suspect. The Department of Education launched a Title IX investigation based on the girl's sex. The department denied a second investigation based on her age. In February, the school system told us it thoroughly investigates all claims of misconduct. We have, of course, reached out to Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools to get a statement on this investigation. And we're joined again by our chief legal analyst, Khalif Rhodes. As we're dealing with this, uh, there were a couple of Title IX uh, investigations put into this. They're investigating one of those claims. So can you break down where we stand right now? So, yes, the, 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 the Civil Rights Department, um, the Office of Civil Rights for the Department of Justice has the responsibility and the obligation to invest any type of civil rights violation. And so Title IX falls under there specifically violations that are based in race and age. Those are protected by the Constitution. And so when you file a claim with the government or they start an investigation, the main portion you have to do is state a violation occurred. Regarding the sex portion, I believe that that was clear and they said that. But regarding the age, they cite in the letter the mother's own statements that, well, really, it wasn't really based on her age, and it kind of sort of was. So they were not denying it wholly, but they said, based on the information that you've given us and what you provided, we can't move forward with that second allegation, but we will have a full investigation regarding the first one, which is extremely damaging because what the attorneys for the family have said, and this is clearly in what the law says, is once the school was on notice, they had a duty to investigate, and it wasn't just being on notice by the victim. Once we ran the story, they were again on notice. And so because you were on notice, you have a duty to complete a full investigation. CMS said they did investigation. The problem is there's con conflicting reports on what the investigation did and what procedures and things you put in place to protect that student. If that student was still on the bus, still riding with the accusers that were accused to have sexually assaulted her, then you will be in violation because you haven't put parameters in place to protect this person during the course of the investigation. And so, and I go back quickly to the second claim. It doesn't mean that it's over. It just means that the Department of Justice and the Civil Rights um, Division won't be doing the investigation. The family is still able to go forward with their own civil claim, and it outlines that in the letter. It says you have a letter, and you can go forward with your own claim within 180 days, but we just won't be going forward with that claim. So this three-page letter was received yesterday. What happens next? Um, they will give the full weight of the federal government here on, against CMS to try to figure out what happened. Um, there will be some type of liability connected to that if they found that there was wrongdoing by CMS for allegation one. For allegation two, her, the family and the family's attorney will press forward, I would assume, with a litigation of their own regarding that second claim. So there could be two potential claims connected to this claim. Additionally, there will be release of information later at, at, at some point because all this stuff is publicly held information. And so they let the family know that if someone is requesting to know more information about what's happening, we have a duty and an obligation to give this back. The last thing I'd say is the letter mentions something about how they can't be harassed. Most of these claims um, that are protected by Title IX come from the, the civil rights movement. They come from women's rights type of pushes. And so people that were fighting for those rights at the time were being harassed. They were being coerced. They were saying, you're bringing this claim and we want to stop you. So it lists that if you're being intimidated or harassed, let us know because they can't do that. Um, the federal government has a strong stance against people that try to bring, bring claims, whistleblowers and folks that are in violations of their civil rights, that you don't harass them while the investigation process is taking place. On CMS's side, um, I can guarantee they are scrambling right now because their legal department will have to show, well, what did you do? And there'll be a paper trail. It hopefully doesn't just show one email that we sent an email out and we took care of it between the school and the bus driver. Hopefully there was a thorough investigation. Most institutions, schools, colleges, and universities have a Title IX coordinator that coordinates the entire investigation. That person, along with their legal counsel, will definitely be moving this morning at 1,000 miles an hour because this is a major blow.
Khalif, if I can quickly ask, end game here. We, we hear the, the charges, with the investigation is ongoing. What does it end up being? Is it something that's going to play out in court? Is there going to be a settlement? What could this look like for CMS down the road? Short answer is settlement. Um, it, with the Department of Justice's uh, portion, they will put parameters in place, um, give them on how best practices to move forward, and, and, and that there could be a civil component financially connected to that as well. But if in the course of their investigation, they found that they missed a step, that maybe someone didn't do what they were supposed to do. They will come down extremely hard on them in terms of process so that nothing like this happens again to a student going forward. Because I have to say, there's two different incidents and two different wrongs. You have the allegations of the sexual assault, something wrong. And then you have the manner in which the investigation was conducted, another wrong. Both of those things have to be avoided, and so the Department of Justice will look at the entire process to ensure that someone is doing what they're supposed to do and that children aren't hurt in the middle.